சிந்மயம் நமாமி சிந்மயம் தேவம் சத்குருங் பிரம்ம வித்வரம் வசுதேவசுதம் தேவம் கம்சானூரமர்தனம் தேவகி பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குருங் தமேவ மாதாசித்தமேவ தமேவ பந்துசமேவ தமேவ வித்யாவிடம் தமேவ தமேவ சர்வம் நமதேவதேவ தமேவ சர்வம் குருதேவதேவ ஹரி ஓம் வி ஆர் டூயிங் தி சிரீஸ் ஆன் செல்ஃப் ரியலைசேஷன் அண்ட் இஃப் யூ ஃபாலோ சிஸ்டமேட்டிக்கலி வி ஆர் ட்ரைங் டு அனலைஸ் ஆஸ் மச் ஆஸ் பாசிபிள் லாஜிக்கலி and taking the help of scriptures when it is needed we try to analyze who is a jeeva or who am i and who is a jeeva and the confusion is obvious for everyone because when i say i am this that's how we define all our bio data is nothing but i am this 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 so very fact that a subject i am is equated to object this which we call it ahankara or ego ego is nothing but i am this 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 and this this can be pages and pages of this the more this more i am but this is an object and i am a subject and i cannot be an object and sub object cannot be a subject and therefore there is an inherent confusion and that i am subject is equated to an object and i am not in really an object i am a subject and subject is that which cannot be objectified and therefore why am i doing this because i do not know myself so we said ignorance is a problem who has the ignorance the one who is taking himself as i am this and any this is limited because that is not this so that is excluded from this when i say i am this i am not that so by process of exclusion this gets limited by space wise time wise and object wise <coughs> and that is called desha kala vastu parichinnam limitations by space wise time wise and object wise object wise means i am this and not that this object is different from that object the object includes starting from this body that's how krishna states krishna says in the in the 13th chapter idam shariram kaunte ya kshetram icha vidiyate this idam is called kshetram so anything i call idam idam is this so this 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 whole universe is nothing but the field in which i am playing but i am a kshetragnyah knower of the field subject who is different from the field so whole 13th chapter talks about subject object distinction only and when i take myself what i am not as i am and therefore experience the consequence of that misunderstanding is the whole life itself not only this life life after life after life after life this is going on and it will go on forever until or unless i recognize that i am not this but i am what i am what is that i am that i am you have heard the biblical statement i am that i am because i cannot say i am this again it cannot be objectified it has to be experienced or it has to be realized as what is self realization is now we asked a lot of questions in the first talk itself is self realization different from a god realization do i need self realization if i realize god and different acharyas or different philosoph- philosophers have dif- provided different explanations starting from the same scriptures so people can get thoroughly confused because each acharya differ from other and who is right so therefore we have been analyzing the system mostly from the rationalist point who wants to question who is right and what is right and on that basis we ask we explain who is a jeeva jeeva is an individual and individual i am 
and that I am is pure consciousness existent all pervading that is Brahman it gets reflected or the consciousness gets reflected in the local subtle body and that local subtle body by process of reflection acts as though a localized conscious entity and that localized conscious entity not knowing the consciousness part the I am part is coming from the total I am takes I am equal to this starting from the mind follow the whole thing so all pervading consciousness is being infinite it gets reflected by the subtle body which is the mind and by process of reflecting the consciousness the subtle body as though acquires the consciousness or reflected consciousness and that reflected conscious mind or the mind that is unleavened mind that means it is activated by the by the reflection of the consciousness and that itself is an expression of life so what is life life is nothing but pure consciousness which is all pervading when it falls on the local mind the local mind has the capacity being a subtle material being a capacity to reflect it and the process of reflection it becomes a conscious entity or appears to be conscious entity and therefore that reflected conscious entity mind is the life itself because now life is pulsating because it's a conscious of everything else so who is the, what is life we say it's a conscious entity what's conscious entity is a reflected conscious entity in the local mind in the other local mind same brahman getting reflected and that acts as a reflected just like the moon is reflecting the mars is reflecting the venus is reflecting same sunlight but each one behaves as though they are individual luminous entities in the sky although the luminosity is not a property of either a moon or a mars or, or venus or any other planet or or even the anything that is shines therefore the consciousness that is activating the local mind behaves as though an independent consciousness not knowing that means it has ignorance so where is ignorance it is in the local mind that thinks that i am an independent conscious entity whoever claims that i am an independent conscious entity has that ignorance and that mind needs education and to that mind only instruction is given that you approach a teacher to know what is the truth what is the truth you your consciousness is not original it's only reflected consciousness there is a pure consciousness which is all pervading that is infinite and the consciousness point that is what it is there is because the mind doesn't have any consciousness so when i say i am claim that i am a conscious entity that conscious entity is actually brahman part only not the local part since local part doesn't have any consciousness all that is what vedanta all that is logical so now we are asking analyzing in the last talk who is ishvara so ishvara is that we defined three definitions first definition is jagat karta ishvara ha one who created the whole universe why do you say it's a creation i think it's just bang like that if it's a bang like that it's a random process randomly one cannot create randomness is a statistical problem for those who are interested statistics applies only for a group behavior not for individual the behavior of individual i cannot predict the behavior of an individual atom in a group because i can only say statistically what is the probability of this is happening so statistics or the or the or this uh, can only be applied not for the ensemble or called group of things but not to an individual 
So when I ask a question, why am I born? I'm talking about at an individual level. Because I am suffering, forget about the rest of the people. Why should I suffer? Why am I born? Who made me to born? If God is there, why did he ask, consult me before whether I want to be born or not? Why did he give me choice where I should be born? How I should be born? All that he didn't give me any choice. So therefore, I cannot inquire about the behavior of an individual through a statistical problem. There has to be a very effect, has to have a cause. So why am I born? There has to be cause. And Vedanta says, you are born in a particular environment to exhaust the vasanas that you accumulated in your previous life. How about my previous life? Why I was I born? Previous life was born because of exhausting the asanas that acquired previous to previous life. Sir, when is the, my first life when they, I don't have any asanas? These are logical questions. It says there is no first life because the ignorance is beginningless. When I don't know that I don't know that I am this, it is beginningless. So ignorance cannot have a beginning. If the ignorance has a beginning means before that I am knowledgeable. A knowledgeable entity doesn't become an ignorant entity. So therefore, igno any ignorance cannot have a beginning, but it can end with a knowledge. So therefore, this beginningless creation is what is essentially being talked about in the Vedanta. So who is the creator? The, the Ishwara is the creator. Why this is a creation? Because a creation is that which is an ordered system. So if I bring a big stone and say, look at my creation, you will hit me with the stone. Hey, this is just a stone. Where is the creation? Suppose I, I carve a beautiful sculpture out of it. Suddenly say, oh, what a beautiful creation. A stone which was not a creation, now suddenly became a creation only because there is an order in the system. Aesthetic order is there. Therefore, I call it a creation. There is an intelligence behind that. And I call this universe as a creation, not just randomly, it's not a creation theory, seven days he created, it's not that type. It is a creation only because it is a well-ordered system. Why do you say so? Because you can see the earth is so small even in this, our solar system, compared to solar system, earth is very small. But in the earth sitting in one lab, a scientist can discover the laws that are applicable to galaxies and galaxies away. Only means that the system is well behaved system. And the laws are universal laws that are applicable anywhere. And he could only discover, not invent the law. Scientist doesn't invent laws. He only discovers. Discover means remove the cover. That means it is there, but it's covered by ignorance. And I, to, I need to have a proper means to uncover. That's called knowledge. Knowledge means means of knowledge is called pramana means that which makes me to know. Pramakaranam pramanam. That which makes me to know is pramanam. So how do I know that there is an object chair there? Open your eyes. See. So seeing is a pramana. So I can discover there is a chair out there when I see. Because without seeing, I'll say I don't know whether the chair is there. The ignorance is there. So presence or absence of the chair is becomes a, a, a result only when conscious entity enters into the picture. So same way, the creation as, because the whole universe is a well-behaved system, the laws governing the whole universe is well-behaved system, that's why a science can advance, because a scientist is only discovering. He may invent certain things, but in his invention is also has to follow the laws that are there already. So even the assembling things has to follow certain laws. If I assemble a wrong elements and put it, it will get corroded in no time. That's what galvanic corrosion. Those who are interested know it's called galvanic because you put dissimilar elements and therefore they are different electrochemically, the potential difference is different. All these parts are parts of the system which is well governed. 
and therefore this is called a creation and therefore is an intelligence there is an order in the system and any order requires work that's what thermodynamics says if all the chairs are in a beautifully arranged that's an order but work has to be done to arrange it it's not randomly thrown and they fall in a place you cannot give a monkey a typewriter and ask monkey to uh, type a beautiful poem by randomly pressing the buttons it may randomly press some words that's not that's a different but a beautiful structure has to be created therefore the universe is called a creation and god is called jagat karta one who created then we ask the next question where is the material for creation any creation requires a material since he cannot go outside somewhere else to get a material material also has to come from him this is why vedanta is a pramana vedanta tells is he the material also has to come from himself in other religions the god created somewhere in seven days and later where did he get material that question is not asked and therefore is not answered vedanta asks if material is there god himself has to become material it has to come from himself and where is he now after creation where is he where is he means what oh he is in the heaven hiding there because nobody nobody can accuse him now no then where is the heaven if he may be he may heaven also but where is the heaven who created the heaven and the heaven is also creation it becomes a part of the creation only so there cannot be anything other than the creation so from this we say creation has to be infinite and therefore creator cannot be outside the creation because there is no outside because outside also has to be created and creator cannot be inside the creation because everything inside is created so creation cannot be same as created if a part of it has to be totally for all so only answer is he himself is creation but i don't see him actually you see him but you get carried away with what you see as only as an objects but in and through every object the essence is that brahman alone that's what is vedanta says if other religion says this then it is vedanta only why vedanta means that is absolute truth i is truth that cannot be experimentally analyze i cannot use let me filter out god in this in this material you cannot because the very essence of the existence of the material is that one so what was there before is is the pure existence it appears to be become many that pure existent consciousness limitless is only appearing in varieties of materials Uh, elements and products and so on so what is the essential material of every object you may say electron protons and neutrons they are still trying to find out what is the essence of electron protons and neutrons too so that what is the 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 all the quarks and all that are coming from that but in the whole process of enquiry even the continuum mechanics they are excluding the enquirer from the enquired even though the analyze when they are analyzing the system system itself getting perturbed by the analysis in the quantum level we said uncertainty comes into picture because the very enquiry disturb the system therefore system will be will be different from each enquiry all they can talk about probabilities only at that level because they cannot be deterministic because the determinism cannot be done so but the tools that an investigator cannot be used to investigate the conscious entity who is investigating this so a objective scientist can never can never analyze the subject and therefore the, because he does not have the valid tools to enquire only way is vedanta proper analysis has to be done but even the analysis only pointing in the direction to think because scientists cannot even analyze what is a thought so therefore he can have theories about thought but what is thought so he can think about the thoughts but what exactly is the thought he cannot really analyze using the objective tools i don't believe a thought if somebody says show me how can you show a thought 
so very questioning in was his thought so therefore showing is not a means so people who ask questions like in atheists you know, they are not able to think properly but they, they say god did not create we give an example of this this famous scientist say god did not create the universe nature did it but what is a nature how did nature which is inert can create inert things cannot create conscious entity is required to create anything so big bang how did bang occurred what are the laws governing the bang how did the laws governing the bang came into picture all these questions oh we cannot answer that you cannot ask that question because it's a singularity but we can ask in vedanta there is no singularity <laughs> because it is beginningless creation comes from the intelligent therefore god is called a creator and also sustainer because the material cause and therefore he is also annihilated any changes occurring in the creation only so the cycle of creation sustenance and and creator is defined as ishvara from which the whole universe came by which it is sustained and into which it goes back and that's all they explain in terms of laya pralaya and all that these are words those who are familiar with vedanta knows but i don't need to know right now i can say god is a conscious entity is an existent entity and therefore he is a limitless entity because he himself became a limitless universe clear now and that existent consciousness limitless is nothing but brahman satchid ananda be said but brahman without parts now we are talking about ishvara with apparent parts which are because the whole creation is different varieties and varieties of things are created and krishna calls this look at my glory this is the beauty of my creation and limitless is my creation because it's infinite so brahman as do quote and quote takes the role of ishvara because he is also satchit ananda satchit limitless ananda now becoming many therefore he remains as a many at the same time that which is substratum adharam because he cannot get away from the universe gold cannot be removed from the universe i don't see consciousness i only see existence we already explained the matter can only reflect the existent part but not the conscious part even though conscious is also everywhere so what is everywhere and what is the material everywhere i see including akasha including the space on because that's how the scripture starts with the first space created then from this all other three types of material gaseous state liquid state and the solid state as well as the energy state all are part of the creation only even our energy is also a matter only so subtle matter and a gross matter how it came into picture the the vedanta provide oh that's all believe okay don't believe it is providing you a, a methodology now you have a better theory than propose it and prove it that is that is better than this so before i knock out some other theory that's unscientific because any scientist what says all other people have done this and they are wrong only and therefore i am proposing a new theory here that is the methodology that is adopted in science and also in vedanta vedanta takes every philosopher before he proposes a new theory he says why all other acharyas proposed are wrong and therefore i am proposing a new theory and he may think his his interpretation of other acharya are wrong may be wrong so therefore you have to analyze whether this acharya is right that acharya acharya is right but we are going with dominantly by the scriptural with the logical so as a support to see what exactly is the truth because recently a friend of mine has sent me email he says aji how come you say that the moksha freedom is freedom from all limitations whereas other philosophers say you go to vaikuntha that's a moksha you go to some other place that's a moksha that's a freedom okay why are they wrong how do you prove that they are wrong i'm not going to prove they are right or wrong what is moksha is freedom from all limitations that is a moksha is otherwise i am i am free and sitting in a jail saying that i am free 
and if I go to Vaikuntha, there are of course not, you are the only one. I have to say, I am very glad that I went to Vaikuntha and I am seeing Lord Narayana. So how long you will see him, you look around, who else made it? Because once you go there, you don't come back. Yad gatva nivartante taddhama paramam mama. My place is, abode is that which can ne- you can never return back. What does that mean? We'll analyze that also. But what does it mean? So when I look around, then I see my neighbor also made it. My God, how did he make it? He shouldn't have made it because I can as it like I deserve to make it, but how come he made it? That's one question that arises in sitting in heaven in, in, in heaven looking at Lord Nara in our side because you cannot come too close to him, you have to sit far away because there are other great bhaktas are there sitting close to you and controlling there. And I am now thinking, Arre, what, a, what a waste of my time. I could have enjoyed more just like my neighbor and then still made it. I could have enjoyed a little bit more. Because if you could make it, I could, okay, anybody can make it. That's my sitting in front of Narayana in heaven. There is a bhinnatum. Whenever there are two things, there is a comparison. That's a part of the nature. So, there is a hierarchy of differences are there in the Jiva Jiva Bhinnatvam, Jiva Jagat Bhinnatvam, Jiva Ishwara Bhinnatvam means differences of between individual to individual, between the individual and the God and between individual and the world all that whenever there is a difference there is a problem and that's what Vedanta also says. Says essentially, Udara Mandaram Kuruti Atasasya Bhayam Bhavati. Even a speck of difference will cause a problem. What is the fear? I am not afraid of myself. I am afraid of something other than myself only. When there is, other, when there is no other than myself, then I am free. So, Moksha is, it is freedom from all limitations. That's why it's called predominantly classified as Desha Kala Vastu. These are limitations of space-wise, time-wise or object-wise. So Vaikuntha is space-wise limited already because uh, Vaikuntha is somewhere else, not here. It may be a better place than this. That's a separate issue. It's a good resort area. You can go there and enjoy it. No problem. But enjoyment is because of the credit card is there. Heavens are all credit card by basis. Once the credit card is expired, there is no nothing to pay. You will be kicked out because you don't want to leave there. Because they will kick you out. Chine punye marti lokam shanti. Once the punyam, the merits are gone, you are kicked out of that place. There are agents there. How did the agents get there? That's also a job there. And you can apply for it and get that job also. But you have to reserve to that job. And you may be staying there for a longer time. Even the Brahmajis is also a post there which you get uh, you get your turn if you work for that post. Because you should be get qualified for any post. Same way every post is because it's a place, location and objectified and therefore it is something one can aspire. In the Kathopanishad, the Yamadharma Raja teaches Nachiket, when I was a seeker, I didn't have that wisdom as you have. I wanted this and I got a job like this. So, the, the Madhar Mahaja says this is also a job. So, who is Ishwara we are talking about? He is that who is pervading everything. I don't see him because he is imperceptible, because he is infinite. But everything that I see is nothing but Ishwara only. That becomes a knowledge. So, therefore, I can invoke the presence of the Lord in any form. So in Vedanta and Hinduism, every animal, every this plants are glorified because every animal is a vahanam for, is a vehicle for some god or not. So not only gods and goddesses, even the animals are glorified because as their vehicles. That means my respect for life is what is invoked there. Not that oh, this is a very crude religion. They have they have even crows also, and everything else is is a, is is glorified as the gods there. If I can see God even in a crow, what great vision I have! That is exactly what Vedanta is trying to point because Lord is everywhere, yet is unaffected by anything. And that we will invest more, more in terms of the nature of Jiva and Ishwara. Ishwara. Now we ask the question later, 
What's the difference between a Jiva and a Ishvara? With that we stop here. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om